Hello everyone. The very basic common question we get that how can I learn embedded systems? If you are an engineer starting right now as an electronics or computer science, or maybe you have already have graduated from the engineering, but you want to start your career into embedded systems, the first question comes that how can I learn this? Because there is no steady course already is given in your college or university about the embedded systems. You may have taught about the electronics or engineering or you have taught about the programming languages. But embedded system is a very very common domain right now, it's a very very hot topic domain right now for the getting the job. And many very institutes are who, which are giving educational studies about that, but not at the university level. So I thought that why not we create a separate post for that, that how can you start learning that embedded systems as a from a very basic level. So to know not make it the post as a complicated, I have started that to make it the post as a very simple that I have created five basic steps which will help you to start them into embedded systems. So let us see that what are this. Really? First step is about the learning C language. But why? If it is about electronics or something else, so why the programming language is so important? For a variety of reasons. Because the vast majority of embedded tool chain or embedded systems, development systems are designed to support the C as a primary language. If you want to write your embedded software for more than just a few hobbyist platforms, you will go to need to learn the C language. And not only in the C language, because you have to become the very, very good in the C language to become the good into the embedded system. Next, we have to learn something about the basic electronics. Don't worry, we are not talking about to going to take a new class for the embedded systems. Just need to have a basic understanding of voltage, current, power, resistance or Ohm's law like that. You probably can get by that from a free on free from different online tutorials or some experimenting with online online simulators or real circuits. Next, you you have to for the starting number systems you need some basic equipment also ready for the, before learning. Since this is embedded software, you will actually be in act, interacting with the physical world. So you will eventually need some physical equipment to test. You will at least need some soldering iron, digital multimeter or sometimes a hardware debugger like JTAG adapter like ST-Link or OLMEX adapter. I also highly recommend getting a logic analyzer. My favorite is from Selly Logic, but there are also many cheaper options are available. Okay, for next, you have to also choose some microcontroller or tool chain. Almost uh, to actually get your programs running, you will need that microcontroller to run them. A compiler that can compile your programs for your target microcontroller. And the other tools to load your programs on the, onto the hardware and debug them. I personally like the STM32 family of the microcontrollers and the Atomel microcontrollers family. Because they are well supported of different embedded, they are embedded tool chain. Like GCC support of the ARM is already supported there. And already the debugger, on-chip debugger is supported, which can be used very easily and free of cost. But these combinations are not as user friendly as the Arduino you get. But it is the most suitable for many of the real world applications. For one good starter option to get an STM discovery kit, they are cheap and relatively accessible and easy to get started with. ARM is by far the most common architecture for embedded microcontrollers, especially for 32-bit microcontrollers. And ARM GCC can target pretty much all of them. OpenOCD is an open source piece of software which can communicate with the hardware debugger and provide a GTP debugger server so that you can load your program 
and step through your code running onto the target with the GDB program. So basically you need some microcontroller and tool chain. We will discuss more about that to start with the embedded systems. Now you have enough to actually get started on something. Actually all you have to do is now let some pick some components and put them together to work. Some good places to look for components are Spark Fun or Adafruit like that companies. And for border and cheaper selection, also there are DigiKey and Mouser.in also available. Once you have found some few components that you think that you will do to do some your projects, now you have to look into their data sheets. The data sheets are essentially the manuals for the electronic components. They are designed and made by the manufacturers. They are the key to figuring out how to use a component and to make sure it all to work for your application. Most of your, most of your questions you have about a component can be answered by the data sheet. By data sheet can be tricky to understand or finding out the exact information because their layout is designed in a standard manner. So the very basic rule of the embedded systems is the first rule of the embedded programming is the read the data set. Second rule of the embedded program is understand the data set. And third rule of the embedded programming is going to be don't trust the data set. You make it implement on the real hardware and refer it to the data set. Data sets are a source of all knowledge, but most of the time as a real peripheral they may not be accurate because the, during the manufacturing the hardware maybe have some challenges or problems which will come out as a debugging purpose when, when you are actually working on the hardware. Now let's start making some projects. Your work should be to get some idea that which project you are want to make. With these components you connect with your microcontroller and start making your program and running it on the microcontroller to interface with the components. Then you can actually understand that what you understanding to programming of the microcontroller it is, is it actually working with the, the specific component or not. And this is the process you have to continue every time. You have to brush up your C language and already always you have to go back to the basic electronics and you have to learn to use the basic components, basic equipments for that. So in this tutorial we have find out that what are the basic steps which can help you to getting to start in the embedded systems. If you want to know more you can hit the subscribe button and it will you will get the all updates in future. Thank you very much.